Well, hello everyone. Thank you for being here. To all the uh, attendees uh, outside, um, hello. Welcome to my presentation. Uh, the title is Service in Section. I'm pleased uh, to be part of the PHP uh, Fest event. I'm Rod Pablo. I'm a backend software developer at Passbolt since almost uh, three years. I'm a KPHP uh, developer, well, user and developer since version 3.3, so it's been roughly uh, eight years. Uh, the KPHP uh, framework has been presented already. It's one of the oldest uh, PHP framework uh, still alive. And it's a framework we will use uh, to, develop, uh, yeah, to, pro to develop the API at Passbolt. So I'll, for the presentation, I'll explain briefly some paradigms paradigm of Passbolt where we, uh, the injection of services is required. Passbolt is a password management with uh, three different flavors. We have the community edition, which is uh, for free. You can install it on your server and use it for your team, regardless of uh, the number of users. The enterprise edition has additional features. And uh, the cloud edition has the same features as the enterprise edition, but we host it for you. So you don't have the matter of having your server or uh, having an email server, it's made for you. The challenge uh, for us developers at Passbolt is to shape the code to match uh, the business model. We have a common structure on which additional features are easily uh, melt. So I will explain how uh, we deal with the dependencies using interfaces and using uh, the XDPN injection con container that has been uh, introduced in version 4.2 and that has a revolutionized, uh, a little revolution, but uh, changed the way we uh, manage the dependencies uh, at Passbolt. I explain one uh, use case of uh, the dependency injection container in, uh, in Passbolt. So uh, Passport is an open source, uh, open source manager for teams. When you register, when you are invited or self-register, because there's a self-registering um, uh, option, you will be uh, asked to have under one passphrase. It is the only thing you will have to remember in order to have access to all your passwords. Um, in addition, this is uh, for the community edition, the case. In order to increase the level of uh, security, we have the option, the administrators have the option to define a minimum uh, entropy for the passphrase used by user. This is how it looks like as an administrator. You are to, going to define the minimum complexity uh, of a passphrase. This is an enterprise uh, feature. And in addition, because uh, users sometimes, well, you know, you, you don't want to trust sometimes, you don't want to trust your users, they might forget their passphrase. If you lose your passphrase, you lose access to your password. So big companies require that there is an option to uh, force or at least put the option that the users, when they create the account, they are asked, are you agreeing with the fact that there is a way for us to recover uh, your passwords in case you lose your, your passphrase? This is also uh, an enterprise uh, feature. I talk about this because uh, this, is, uh, this is an endpoint. This is the output of an endpoint of the enterprise solution. It is when a user makes a setup, we are going to the, the, the front end needs to know what are the features enabled in this uh, journey. It's going to need information on the users. It's going to know, need to know is the account recovery uh, policy that I showed before enabled? And is there a minimum entropy required on the passphrase? So this is another uh, an additional information that is needed when the user does the setup. And we have only one endpoint. Uh, you can compare it as a, a pizzeria. When you go to a pizzeria, you have a base pizza, and then you can order additional features on your pizza. And you don't have one pizzeria per type of pizza, otherwise it would be a horrible uh, user experience. You just want one basic thing that's shared, and then you inject different uh, recipes. So we have the basic user setup. This one, we don't even have to talk about dependency injection because it's core. If you can't register a user, password is this. And if enabled, uh, 
manage the password poli passphrase policy and if enabled, manage the contract recovery policy. So to give it a little bit of um, uh, flash, if I found the mouse is there. This is how the journey looks like. I've received an invitation. Uh, I need to enter a password. So you see there is a minimum entropy required. I have found something complex. What's next? I get my uh, private key, so with the passphrase, and this solid uh, device, which is a, a key, a file, I can have access to my passwords. Then the administrations had said that the account recovery is mandatory, so the user is informed of it. He has to accept or call the administrator and say, no, I don't want. And the journey is done. And uh, based on that, we have also some FS settings. I won't talk about that. But based on that, the user is ready to use passport, share, pass, uh, share uh, passwords, create his own passwords. After, we're going to talk about code. So I wanted to show that so uh, at least those who are not interested or will be running after understanding the code, I've had a bit of the presentation. It won't be also too complicated. I just want uh, to illustrate how the domain and the code are uh, organized the same way. So this is how the endpoint looks, looks like. We have a, that's a controller, that's a, a method of a controller. We have only one method in that controller. And what it does, uh, we inject an abstract setup start service. I'll get into it, but it's basically the cook in the, uh, in the kitchen. We check that only non-registered users can uh, register. Otherwise, it makes no sense to register if they're already done. And then the info service has a get info, which is going to uh, serve the output of the JSON request I've shown before, based on uh, the flavor of, uh, of password. I'm going to talk a little bit about interfaces. Uh, I prepared that question. Does anyone know about interfaces? Then you came in the meeting, so I'm going to ask because otherwise it would have been uh, pretty much uh, not. Uh, anyone has uh, an idea about uh, who has never heard of interfaces? Yes. You, okay. You have never heard about interfaces. So an interface is uh, loud. The Wikipedia definition in computing an interface is a shared boundary across which two or more separate components of a computer system exchange information. In that case, that door has been implemented and there's no way to open it. So the contract is not completed. Uh, a door needs a way to be open. This is the interface. There needs to be a clutch, or at least a way to open. After the way you implement it, up to you. That so depends on how you, how much you you must afford, what is the technology available, but you can have a different type of implementation. Have you seen before uh, in the community edition, you just register, you don't have any uh, requirements on the passphrase, or and then on the based on what the administrator has set up, you can have uh, additional features. An example of a very nice interface. So I know that not all developers use interface or use it in a way that is very uh, theoretical. They've learned you have to use interface, so they put interface everywhere, and then uh, they might not be needed these interfaces. So that's in Cake, that's Cake PHP code. It's the driver interface. So this defines the contract of what that a class has to supply. To, to submit if it wants to interact with a cake uh, PHP uh, connection, database connection. So you see all kind of method, connect, disconnect, get connection, set connection, enable, you know, prepare, whatever. You see there is absolutely no implementation. It just says that there needs to be a method that's called prepare that takes a query as parameter and that will return a statement interface. But it doesn't say how. So if you think about the clutch again, it has to be something that enables to open the door that is accessible to the user, not like at the top of the door. But the rest, you implement it the way you want. Okay. So now let's dig into the code. 
uh, the dependency uh, dependency injection uh, container, as we said, it's pretty new in PHP. I think it's less than two years old. I will explain uh, how we use it. First, I'll briefly describe the way we organize architecture, architecture at Passbolt. At Passbolt, uh, we use slim controllers. So one endpoint, one controller. Each controller has one method. Uh, we use slim models. We don't put too much, co uh, too much code in the models. We put all of our code mostly in the services. We use middlewares too. But the service is going to perform uh, the task required by, uh, by the controller. I'll explain later why this has a, a lot of advantages. And an additional thing uh, at Passbolt is that we use plugins as features. We have plugins that are not features, but a feature, if it's not a core solid uh, thing that can't be disabled, we create a plugin. And this enables us to easily deactivate the plugins. If an administrator says, this plugin is for me too risky, or I don't want to see it, he just deactivates it and it will be absolutely invisible. One little example of the first way we, uh, we used the uh, dependency injection controller, controller is the multi-factor authentication. Multi-factor authentication, by definition, you are going to depend on an external library. It's not you. You tell to someone, so there's that user who wants to log in. Can you double identify it for me? Can you make sure that this guy is really uh, known by, uh, the passport, uh, by the passport instance. So the fact that the verification is outside of uh, the software, it will imply uh, that you don't control the response. And for us, it was a problem when we wrote tests. So when you write tests, uh, you want to simulate what is going to be the response because it's a test. You don't want to have an actual code to the API. Maybe the service is not available or it makes the creation of credentials difficult or even risky to manage. So you're not really, you don't really mind what the response of the external library is. Instead, you want to mock it. So this is how the controller looks like. If you're looking at the presentation later, you can click on controller, you will be linked to the code directly. What the controller does, it has a MFA form interface that is going to verify that the data in the request uh, is valid so that the user is correctly identified. If not, handle the, the exception and otherwise uh, handle the, the success verification. Here we have our interface, which says just execute. So it's very simple. It's just check, authentify, and it's very useful for testing, or it's actually you can't test without this uh, using uh, the injection of service, because what we do, you're going to log the user in, set up the scenario, so we use the fixture factories there, we define that the organization has enabled uh, YubiKey authentication, that the user has enabled uh, YubiKey, and then we mock the response uh, of the, the service, in that case, uh, we to response to make, uh, to, to mock that the response is positive, and we ensure that there's been an MFA token created in the database and that it is uh, added to the response that it is secure all kind of uh, assets that are all uh, native to, to PHP, to the KPHP test uh, suite. So that already was really a game changer for us because it enabled to, to cover a large part of code that, was other, that would otherwise not uh, be possible to test. Now let's have, let's get back to the example of before. Um, this time we are going to inject into, we are going to inject into services. So we're going to inject services, but on top of that, in these services, we are going to inject classes. I'll go back to, uh, to our example. So here we have an abstract setup stat service, the info service. It's abstract. This uh, class cannot be instantiated but it defines how the informations are going to be collected. In the application, uh, application.php, so this is core, this is no plugin, this is a must. 
we uh, we use the container, so the, the, the package feature that was introduced. And we're going to say the abstract setup start service is the default setup start service. I'll show you after what's inside. And it has an argument, it has the setup start user info service. And that setup start user info service is going to provide that little information that was user. On the endpoint, you remember, there was info on the user. Who's that user? Info on the uh, user passphrase policy and info on the account recovery policy. Since the last two are not in the core, they are uh, enterprise features, here you won't see them. They're not even appearing. And then in the container, we inject the setup start user info service. So the container will know, okay, this is the, the service to inject into the controller. And it takes that argument. And that argument is this one. It's the setup start info service. So far, it's pretty simple. But when we pass to the enterprise um, solution, we need to tell, okay, now it's, it's finished. We need another uh, set of start service. And this set of start service is not going to take only the user info service, but on top of that, it can take these two uh, info services that are going to provide info on account recovery, info on post fast policy. So here we overwrite the abstract set of start service, which say it's not the default, it's the EE, and it can take these two parameters in addition. And in the user pass fast policies plugin, only the first line here is uh, relevant. We say this uh, password policy info service is defined. That's important because if we don't load the plugin, this will, be, this will not run. And since this will not run, it will not be injected in the container. And when we do the resolution, um, yeah, I can show you quickly how the abstract setup start service. When we do the resolution, since that service is not in the container, he will not add it to the information that is provided. So the abstract uh, setup start service has services that can be added. And in the end, it will, when we call the get info in the controller, it will go through all the service and decorate the information that is provided. And this add is important. This, uh, the, there we are going to register services and this is uh, how the setup start service looks like. We have the default setup start service, and this is the class. So if you focus only on the first top uh, piece of code, this is what the default setup start service looks like. It's just a constructor. There's nothing else. What we do is we inject the recover start user info service. It is hard coded, um, as opposed to the second part, but I'll show after. So what that service does, you instantiate it. He registers that start user info service and that's it so he knows that he has well that that's it on the second part that's the ee setup start service that is the pizza with uh, with olives and this one we are going to add in the constructor is going to extend the default one and we have two additional parameters that we unfortunately cannot type because we are not at php 8 and um, the container, the PHP lead container used by PHP will return a string if it could not resolve a, a dependency. It's not the end, it's okay, it's not the end of the world. The day we, uh, we raise the level of PHP, we can type it and put it uh, interface or string. So that's, how, that's what happens in the enterprise uh, implementation. We just inject more services and that's it. What I want to focus on, even if you don't understand too much of that, is you see that the code is small. It's pretty small. So at least you don't, there's a little that you don't understand. It would be a mess if you didn't understand a lot. But here, and you can read it. So you know that it is a default setup start service. And uh, when it is instantiated in the construct, we're going to add the recover start user info service. And the same uh, on the page, page below. And this is how we create out of one entry point, one pizzeria, uh, of, uh, different types of pizzas with different ingredients, depending on what uh, the customer wanted to, uh, to have with this pizza. The user, if it's a community, and two others. 
if it's, uh, it's only if it's been enabled by the by the admin. And this is in terms of security is massive because the reason why we want to disable plugins is that, for example, we could say, well, in the cloud, this is not a wise thing to have that feature. We just want to never see it. And in terms of security, if you disable the plugin, you really simply erase it basically from your from your own application. It's not going to be a switch in the controller that some developer will, um, by mistake, neg negate, and then suddenly it's there again. Yeah. So that that was it in terms of uh, of coding. If you have questions or if you have uh, if you've faced the same uh, paradigm, I'm sure you're facing a lot of paradigms. Uh, in, in your projects, you can tell us if you've uh, used the uh, defense injection in a different manner. I think there are all kinds of ways to uh, to use it. You have it, the one, the solution out of the book, where you put it everywhere. And uh, you have it based on uh, what is the, what is our product? And how do we impact our product in the code? Or how do we shape our code the way our, uh, our product looks like? And this tool enabled us to have uh, to have the full uh, the full uh, liberty to to distribute in a clean way uh, the different solutions required by the users. So it's a new fee. It's a new. We don't code like that since forever. Uh, we can improve it, but right now any new features, this is what we use for now. Right. So that was it uh, for the code. To wrap it up. You can meet us uh, on the Password uh, Community Forum. You probably uh, know about it. If you have requests or if you want to clap or if you want to um, complain, but complain, it's okay. We have enough uh, daily. <laughs> if you want to contribute while complaining, that's actually the best. Here's a link to the Password API. It's open source. You can have a look at it. So to wrap it, some links, this is the password API, the community forum. This is the link to the documentation to the current injection by Cake PHP. This is the documentation. Eventually, if you want to understand it better, you have to use the to go into the PHP container. And a big thanks to uh, the Cake PHP community, to the Cake PHP developers, to Mark. I know that Mark is the one who puts the container in place. Uh, it's simple and it does a lot of stuff. So big thanks to that. If you have questions, uh, please do so. Uh, question? Yeah. Um, so you need to repeat the question. Yeah. So what are the cases where you uh, don't use it, you should not use it, or like, uh, well, you don't use it? Uh, can you explain a little bit? Uh, because it's not always that people will think to inject styles, right? Yeah, so the question is, uh, is there uh, scenarios where you don't want to use the dependency injection, where you should not? Um, we should have a, a Symfony developer here to, to, exp to, to, to tell that, because I know that Symfony really relies a lot on dependency injection, and it is typed generally by string. Uh, for us, you've seen, uh, if I go back, you've seen that it is typed by uh, by classes. So if you look at, let's go back into the bird. If you look at here, for example, your ID is going to understand that per uh, perfectly. So if you click on, uh, even better, if you go to the abstract, abstract setup stat service, you click on that, you know where it's defined, which are the classes. If you don't use something like that, already I would say, be careful, you are going to lose yourself. So it's not exactly not using dependency injection, but it's depend using a tool that makes it really useful for clarity. Then another thing, just to, to finish the, 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 to, to reply to, to Remy, so that's, that's not a, a really a way not to use it, but be careful how you use it, so that it becomes a soup. Because what I've shown here, these are the plugins, but actually you can load service providers, which in time, uh, in term, are going to be a list of these. It can become messy. So if it's strings, you're lost. And then uh, from my past experience, I worked with guys who used it uh, because they read it and they evangelized from some profits. 
and uh, they used it systematically. But on the other hand, it was not possible because to maintain at first it had a cost. And you can't use it everywhere. So where they could not use it, they were taking back practices. So that's, uh, yeah, that's, to wrap it, you have to identify where you know it and you have to understand what is an interface. And an interface is a communication with the outer world. Uh, you have to know what are the boundaries of your domain, define them well, and define where it needs attention. For example, by definition, uh, database is also a boundary. So we use the CakePHP tool. We don't inject anything. We let CakePHP do it, and we remove it from our image of what is the, 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 the our domain boundary. So don't use it before you see it and really define where are the boundaries, where are the boundaries that we really must control. So don't jump into it for, for no reason. And then just to finish, also the risk is how do you use it in your tests? Because I really believe in test driven development because I'm lazy. So I want things you know, to work once they're written. Uh, how is this going to match in the picture? And generally writing your first test is already going to tell you if you're going nowhere or if this is the right approach. And don't mock too much. That's the risk also. If you inject everything, you'll be tempted, well, we'll inject and then we mock. And then we mock the service in the controller. What I've shown you was, with the MFA was an extreme case. Because it's really something external. Theoretically, we could mock even our own code. But then, yeah, the tests are really fast. But what are you really testing? So don't be, an, don't be too extreme, I'd say, into dependency injection and define where we need. Yes, Mark, you had a question. Um, maybe a follow up on this, um, because part of the answer could also be maybe regarding what you put into the service. So, is the object that you're putting in the class, is it a stateful or a stateless class? So, is, are the service injected a stateful or a stateless uh, class? Well, first, it depends on what is, in the, what is the service doing. We have our term service. We took it in order to get rid of the MVC because we thought the model, neither the model, the view, and the, nor the controller should manage our business. Uh, you have most services are going to interact with the database. So in that case, yeah. Now the, the properties of the services are generally, uh, they're all protected. So you will have an interaction between services, but we try to limit it as much as possible. So we inject services into services, but we barely share properties among uh, services. Yeah, so what I mean is that probably most services will be stateless. Yeah. And they should not be stateful. As soon as they're stateful, probably there will be an issue along the road. Depends. I mean, um, generally, first of all, we have very little interaction between the two for that. But uh, that's something. Then, like the controller of the services in password, because generally, you, if you uh, call the action once of the service, you can call it again. And basically, there's no remembering of the state uh, of the previous call, except in the persistent layer, like the database. But so you can call it uh, twice and have the same uh, result because the, the previous result is not influencing the, the first one, uh, at least at the class level, not at the data level. Mm -hmm. Frankly, it depends. Sometimes we want uh, them to be uh, stateful. And uh, cover it with tests. This is what uh, the solution for that, if you don't want things to, to collide. Another question? Are you using uh, the, the dependency injection container of Cake, Mark? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, so. I'll, I'll, uh, uh, not, not as extended as you are. So, so not as extended as we do? Not as extensive. That's yeah, not, ex not as extensively. Okay. Okay, well, thank you very much. <laughs>